Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry that I've not posted in a long time. Um, I haven't found as much enjoyment as this as I was hoping and sadly I just it's been really hard for me to get on and record myself um, talking about this stuff. I have a really hard time explaining things and so I just always have trouble um, making videos. Um, but I just wanted to come on today and make a quick video talking about shading and how it can change the look of your dresses. That's kind of what elevates your dresses or your clothes, you know, whatever you're making is how much shading you're using. So we're going to obviously start by opening up the custom design app and just go to whatever. And obviously, if you if you see my Instagram, you know that I am obsessed with these long sleeve dresses. Um, I don't know what is about them. They just, I love the way they look. So to explain shading in the simplest way, I'm going to create a crop top real quick. Um, and to do that, you know, you just go over to skin color. Um, if you don't know the skin tones, um, you can just search like a CNH skin tone guide. And that will give you a lot um, of different like images that you can follow for reference. <sighs> Just to like how to match your character's skin tone. Um, so we've created that line and that already can, can be our crop top and that can be our skirt. So we're just going to copy this line to back. And there we go. So we have this, this shirt. And let's say we want the shirt to be red. So we're going to fill all the shirt colors, all the shirt parts with red. And I personally, I don't like this red. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring the brightness down a little bit. And, you know, let's, let's go right there. So we have this color. So what we're going to do is like, this is fine, but it doesn't really look like a shirt. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create some shadowing. In order to do that, you're going to go to this change color button. And then from there, you're going to match the hue and the vividness of the color that you are uh, working with. And you're going to do this to two colors that you're going to match the hue and vividness. And then you're going to have the first color be one brightness darker, and then your second color be two darker. Yeah, so with the darkest color, right where there is a color color breakup, I don't know how to explain this, but right when the red meets the skin tone, or if this was like maybe a band that was black, um, in order to break that up a little bit, we go in with this darkest shade here, just one line of that, and then go in with the middle shade like that. And already you can see the difference from that to that. And we can also do this at the top. If you're using a skin tone, you can always um, create a neckline. I find it easiest to do this with the, uh, the line tool that they give you. And then you can just like fill that in real quick. And then where, again, where the skin or the first color meets the shirt, the second color, you can either use this darker color here and just kind of outline it. For me, that's a little bit, it's a little bit too strong. So I'm going to go in with the middle shade. And that's just kind of a simple way to, to outline and give your shirt a little bit of definition. Another thing you can do is if you are using skin tones, you can match the hue and vividness of your skin tone. And then you can take the brightness just one to two lower. And then from here you can do some shading like that. You can, and like that's that's really what I like to do is just to kind of create a breakup between the colors. So that's just like the front shirt part. For the back, a real neckline would probably continue a little bit. So we're kind of showing the neck right here. 
So if we flip over to the back, we just, ooh, that's too much. We just want a little bit to be showing. I don't like that. There we go. Like that. It's just a small detail. And again, we're going to outline this with the medium shade. And now we have that. And then we're going to copy like what we did in the front. Like that. And then you can already see how this would look different than if we're just using one color and we don't have those transition um, shades, I guess is what I'll call them. Transition shades, yay! <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm terrible at explaining things. So if we go over to a sleeve, again, you can, do, you can click, you can change to the things by uh, pressing down on the right stick. So if we're at a sleeve, um, I think this is the right sleeve. So if you pay attention, this first line doesn't show up. It kind of shows on the inside of the sleeve, which doesn't really mean anything. Same with the second line. It shows up a little bit, but not really. So I always go three lines up with the darkest shade and then one to two with a middle shade. And then we have that. And you can already see the difference between the left and the right sleeve. So then if we come up, um, I always forget which pick, hang on, give me a moment. I think it's this one. Yeah, it is. So you can see how on the sleeve, by putting a pixel here, it's giving that, that shadow where like the really puffy part meets the not puffy part on the sleeve. I don't like the way this really dark shade looks here, so I'm going to switch it over to the medium shade, and I, I like that look. So then we're going to take this, and we're going to copy and that's it. That's like some really basic shadowing. I mean, if you are, if you have a more intense design, the shadowing is obviously going to change. I'm going to pull up the pattern. Uh, let's go with this one. So this, I'm just going to say, is not 100% my design. Like, I found this photo on Pinterest, and then I changed it a little bit to how I liked it, but I don't know who was actually the creator of this grid. If you do know, please leave a comment. I'd really appreciate it if I could properly credit them. But anyways, going back to what I was talking about, the original grid for this does not have any of the shadowing. It doesn't have these lines coming down, um, and a lot of this just isn't here. So what I did was where there was this illusion of a strap, I added some shadowing underneath it to give it some Defin definition, dimension, same with where the collar meets the jacket, I did the same thing. And then where the shirt is meeting the skirt, I just realized a mistake. No, it's not a mistake. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Ignore me. Um, and then I had a bunch of free colors available, so what I did was in this brown strap part, you can see how this is a darker brown than this. And it gives it, it gives the, the dress a little bit of, like I was saying, dimension. And these grays are, I think, three different grays just kind of randomly mixed together just to make the uh, creases come in and out a little bit in more spots. Um, over here on the sleeves, actually let's go over to the back, yeah. You can see here I started with darker colors and then went out to lighter colors and yada yada and so on and so forth. It really helps to have a picture of a real dress where you can actually see the shadowing and then try to mimic that. That's what I do. Um, I'm sorry that I'm terrible at explaining this stuff. I'll try to get better in the future um, and I'll probably make a video about how I did this dress. But again, it is not this Violet Evergarden dress. The, the grid is not mine. I just changed it a bit. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope to get better at explaining things for you guys in the future. And yeah, I hope you have a great day. Thank you and bye.